We're back in the world of Bridezillas, everybody. Can you believe it? There's more. I once worked in a bakery and we had this bride freak out that her cake wasn't right and proceeded to smash it to bits with her fists. Talk about a tantrum. But she smashed the wrong cake, like WTF. Anyways, the cops allowed her to wash her hands before placing her in handcuffs. I felt bad for the future husband and the couple that ordered said cake. People are cray cray. People are cray cray. And like, how do you explain that to the couple who's coming to pick up their cake? Oh, by the way, some crazy bride just came in here and punched your cake to bits. I used to work at a jewelry store. This young guy, college age, came in one day looking at engagement rings. That's so precious. Very polite, asking good questions. You could tell he'd been considering this for some time. That's so cute. As I'm helping him and showing him some rings in his budget, she walks in. She's wearing a t-shirt from the high school senior class from the previous year and she comes over by him. Oh my God, were you seriously considering that ring? Ugh, it's so ugly. Besides, it looks just like my last engagement ring. How I wish I could have told him to dump her, run for the hills, and don't look back. Well, I'm hoping he's realizing that on his own. Opposite of what you were asking, but I was working at a major hotel on the Las Vegas Strip when a wedding party came to one of the main bars after a very nice wedding. This was after the reception, so they changed into non-wedding clothes, and the bride proceeded to get drunk and get flirty with new husband. Security was called and she was asked to leave because prostitutes are not allowed to solicit on the property. The aftermath was no bueno, but she did get all of her expenses comped. <gasps> Technically, they did the bride wrong by assuming she was a prostitute. What a bold assumption. Went to a cousin's wedding when I was really little. She had spent a fortune on decorations and dresses and had this extravagant wedding dress tailored for her. And we all arrived and waited for the wedding to start. An hour passed, then another, and all the adults started grumbling. Finally, a group of guys drove over to find out what was keeping up the groom. This was before mobile phones. <laughs> And it turned out the bride hadn't informed him of their wedding or their engagement or that they were dating. No, I refuse to believe that. That is some crazy girl behavior right there. <laughs> Worked for a wedding photographer here. Wonderful couple, seemed made in heaven. Their wedding album without pics cost two K. Like the album itself, the physical album without pictures, $2,000. Thing was made from mirrored glass, weighed a ton. It was my job to order the 60 eight by tens the bride wanted to use. This album had no protective sleeves, so every single pick had to be sprayed with a chemical coating and left to dry in a dust-free area. If it did not dry with a smooth dust-free finish, I had to remove the chemical coating and try again. I spent most of that week in a tiny closet-sized room in a full respirator mask and protective gloves and eyewear spraying those stupid picks. But my God, I have to say it was the best job ever. When done, this couple spent over $5,000 on that one album. It was gorgeous. And they divorced before the year was up. Duh. Probably worth it for the bride if you were together still. <laughs> but like what a demand. Like that's a lot of detail. If you're paying for it, I guess you can ask for whatever you want. I don't see this as two bridezilla. Wedding band member here. Had a bride flip her stuff at me and my bandmates because our instruments weren't white or salmon colored to fit in with the decorations and she was saying that we would ruin the photographs. Even though I was playing during the reception and all the photos were already taken. A sunburst jazz bass Blue Stratocaster and a red drum set aren't going to ruin your pictures, darling. Well, that's just like so ridiculous anyways. When she hired the band, and if that was a requirement, wouldn't you say like, oh, what color are your instruments? I'm hoping for like a white or a, like, not that that would probably even exist, but photographer here, the couple opted for an outdoor wedding with no weather backup option. And lo and behold, it started pouring rain literally five minutes before the ceremony. The guests and groom ran for cover under the reception tent. 
and it didn't let up. The groom made a mad dash to the door of the RV the bride was getting ready in because she nor any of the bridesmaids were answering their phones. She made the poor guy stand outside in the pouring rain while she screamed and cussed that she was not getting married under the tent and everyone would just have to wait until it stopped raining. This was the middle of July, so even the rain was hot and sticky and there were a lot of elderly family members with health issues in attendance sitting in 80 degree heat for over an hour. Whoa. The cake had also started melting. I honestly wasn't sure if the wedding was going to happen at one point, but it eventually stopped raining and the bride married her soaked groom and ate wedding cake soup. I think that is such a risky game, picking an outdoor wedding, because weather, I don't know, over here in Canada anyway, way too unpredictable. It changes within minutes. You can't trust it. Retired master seamstress checking in. Not bridezilla, but momzilla. Ooh, those mother-in-laws. I was making her daughter a custom bias cut gown and had limited fitting time because the bride lived one state over. We, my mom and I, would work on details between fittings. I would say our working relationships got very frosty. Oh, the bride's mom. Mm. Each time the bride came for a fitting, she lost weight. Tape measures don't lie, and she was not a big girl to begin with. Mom would scream that her daughter did not lose any weight. After the third fitting, third fight, and the third rebuild of one very complicated gown, I finished it and told them to take the gown and do what they wanted with it. It was gorgeous, but hung loose. The girl lost over three inches over the course of seven to eight weeks. I lost hours of my life and the money for the work. The deposit took care of the materials, $140 per yard silk Venice lace. So there is that. That's really scary though, to be honest. Like to me, I'm just concerned for the bride because to lose three inches in just seven to eight weeks, like I'd be concerned. Bridal consultant here. My most memorable appointment was a party that showed up completely poops to the wind hammered. <laughs> It wasn't unusual for bridal parties to have a little tailgate style party in our parking lot before coming into our store. Often they'd have mimosas or a shot or two to loosen up before the scary gown search. Okay. The party must have finished a full bottle of whiskey between the five of them. Ooh, dangerous. They didn't appear too sloppy when we first got started, but about half an hour into the appointment, it was pretty obvious that they were way too drunk to be in the setting that we were in. I had to prop the bride up with her nose in the corner of her fitting room to lace her corsets because she couldn't stand. And each time we stepped out onto the stage, the bridesmaids would scream. Beatlemania style until they were red in the face. Eventually, my manager came to me and said very sternly, sell this girl and get them out of here. The appointment ended when she fell for a gown $700 over budget. Her drunkest bridesmaid swiped her own credit card to cover it. And then one of them, not sure which, sprayed a brown bodily fluid of some kind over our, oh, come on now over our entire toilet, bro. That would not even be enjoyable. Like what fun is that when you're that hammered? Do groomzillas count? Oh my God, yes. We have been waiting for groomzilla stories. They're impossible to find compared to bridezillas. So yes, we welcome them. I used to work as a bridal registry consultant for a big department store. I had several nightmare couples and family members, but I always think of this guy. The bride was pleasant enough and very polite. She expressed great excitement when discussing the plans for the wedding and the groom just seemed bored. She was very excited to pick out fine china and the groom snapped. He yelled at her and called her an idiot and told her that there's no need for expensive things like that. He said we would never use it and she insisted that she will find reasons to use it so it won't go to waste. She also said that her family insisted on picking a pattern so they would all chip in to get the set. She was nice enough and patient enough with this jerk that she kept asking him what he liked. The groom didn't say anything and kept yelling at her and told 
told her that she's wasting his time and that she was stupid. He kept insisting that she was an idiot and it was getting really uncomfortable. I tried to intervene as much as I could, but this groom was complete scum. Eventually he stormed off and I tried to keep everything lighthearted and happy for the bride. Well, bless your soul because I would have lost my job that day because I would have looked that man in the face and called him an absolute idiot and told him to leave. And I would have not let her leave without convincing her to not marry that man. I have an itch and a yaw. I'm gonna have like a micro nap. Many years ago at this job I had, I think he was French. <laughs> when this employee that I worked with, he would have micro naps and we'd be like sitting there working together and he literally would be like, I'm gonna have a micro nap. And he'd literally, I'm talking 10 seconds max. And he literally just closed his eyes. And like he said, he was convinced that it would like reset your whole brain and body. It doesn't work, by the way. I'm out of here, you guys. Hope you have a good micro nap if you ever try it. Stay classy with theirs, stay sassy, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.